this season marks a new beginning. Witness the raw power, iconic sound, and pure speed from the historic Lotus 79. Experience the competition and glory days of early 80s open wheel action. Watch as drivers wrestle these ground effects cars into submission. Drivers will face off wheel to wheel. For some, it's a chance at redemption. For others, an opportunity to make a statement. All sharing the same goal, to be crowned champion. Tune in Thursday nights on the iRacing Esports Network to watch the premier historic open wheel series on iRacing. The Lionheart Retro Series presented by Butt Kicker. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. It's the final race of 2019 Season 1. A mere four points separate Padovani and his teammate Overbay. While Overbay stands on the high ground with a points lead, Padovani carries an immense amount of momentum. Three of the last four rounds have been won by the Brazilian. A tight and demanding circuit stands between both of them and the crown. Which one gets the throne? We'll find out soon as we get ready to watch the final round of the Precision Racing League's American iRacing Thursday series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esports Network. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is Taylor Burris. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Crackers Ambrose, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Taylor, Grand's Hatch. It's tough enough in lower powered cars, but these radicals seem like they've got to be on a knife's edge around here. These radicals are definitely on a knife's edge here at Brands Hatch, and welcome to Brands Hatch Racing Circuit. Located in Kent, England, this 2.3 mile or 3.7 kilometer nine turn course is one of the pinnacle British motor racing tracks in the UK. From many forms of motorsports, from open wheels, sports car racing, even hosting events for the 2012 Paralympics, it's definitely a track worth visiting if you're over in the UK. To give drivers to see you the one invite to take on this amazing course, let us go on board for a GSRC lap dive. All right, we've got Stefan Schlocker and the GSRC Radical, so let's do a lap around Brands Hatch. Paddock Hill Bend will make it difficult to get the car down to the apex, but the bigger worry will probably be the compression at the bottom. The car may get a bad bounce and send you spinning. Plus, about the only great place to outbreak your opponent is into Druids. There's going to be some desperate lunges into this hairpin that might not result in happy drivers. 
off the corner and back down in elevation again, Graham Hill Bend will, will be faster than you'd expect because you can take quite a bit of the runoff. Then comes another spot that's likely to bring danger, Surtees. The curb to the inside can upset the car, but the curb at the exit will also be treacherous. Of course, spinning the wheels as you try to get a run down Pilgrim's Drop just adds to the likelihood that many will swap ends during today's race. With such a long straightaway, you'd think there'd be a chance to pass into Hawthorne, but this right-hander requires little braking and is taken at a frightening rate of knots, so only the brave will be going through here side by side. Westfield is another that will be pretty single file and needs you to take all the runoff you dare to be fast. After plunging through Dingledell, you've got the blind apex of Sheen. Driver error will be embarrassingly common, especially when pushing the limit through this corner. Now, despite the banking in Sterling, a good driver will be gentle in reapplying the power to keep from finding the Armco. You can finally get a short breather, so take the chance to collect yourself before Clark. This is a strange corner that will leave many fighting understeer due to the crest in the middle. Once again, try not to spin the wheels as you power up the curved Brabham straight, but you've now hopefully finished a lap around Brands Hatch. There you see a lap around Brands Hatch. There's going to be a lot of them here in the 45-minute race as they get around here quite quickly. This uh, season, of course, is sponsored by HFD1 Motorsports. A big thank you goes out to that team for tossing the money forward to make sure that this thing gets to air every Thursday night of this short winter season. It has been spectacular to watch. Uh, especially since this is a new series for PRL. And so the drivers have really had to adapt to it, and it's thrown up some crazy finishes uh, for us. So big thank you once again to HFD1 Motorsports. Now, the championship. I talked about it. It's gotten very, very tight. Uh, Padovani has outscored Overbay by 14 points in the latter half of the season and has closed in. However, because he missed the first round, you see he has no drop weeks. Uh, so that won't really come into effect except for Overbay if he has a DNF out here very early on and finds himself lower down the standings because he still has 13 pocket points. But it'll uh, be a little bit complicated, of course, uh, but thankfully with it being so small of a gap, it's mostly down to who finishes ahead of the other by enough positions, uh, maybe about two or three. We'll try and keep you up to date as the race goes on. File has jumped up to third, and uh, there you see the rest of the five. Let's take a look at the team's championship. Taylor, well, what are we looking at for that? Well, the team's championship, maybe not as close, but still is quite tight for the top two as B.O. Racing of Overbay and Padovani lead by 38 points over the Fraley's auto body team of File and Luke. While the Cash for Crash team of McLaughlin and Wildridge are back in third position, 123 points back with the Blown Tranny Racing team with Gunderson Gore in fourth, and then the Black Flag Racing crew with Ritzko and Gilm who round out your top five here, Joe. And then if you haven't watched one of these races yet, well, this is an interesting one to join on with all the stakes that we have up for grabs. We are in the final round of this uh, eight race season. They've restricted the fuel compared to what the real cars have. So uh, they have one scheduled pit stop for fuel in this 45 minute race. They can tweak the setups of the car to their liking. It is not a fixed setup series. Uh, the real cars have a number of things that you can do to them. And so anything you can do there, you can do here in the sim. They also have an incident cap of 24. If you hit those 24 incidents, you are disqualified on the spot. They have uh, no spare car waiting for, uh, for them. If they get any sort of damage, you've got to come in and get that repaired if you find you can't drive as well as you used to. And damage will like be likely around this tight track. Uh, I have to imagine that's got to be included in one of those keys of the race. Yeah, it is definitely a big key here for these drivers. It is very difficult to pass here at Brands Hatch. Drivers are going to have to be showing patience throughout the duration of this race, finding that opportune time to make that pass. There's a several code passing opportunities. One of them is going to be turn one, that downhill corner, but be careful and make sure the car does not get too loose from out underneath you. Otherwise, you could end up into the barriers. Another thing drivers are going to have to keep an eye on is that this is the final race of the season, so points are on the line. We may have some drivers not able to maybe go for the championship, but what about those just wanting to finish the season off 
on a high note. I know that a lot of drivers here tonight were looking forward to just finishing strong here to put a little bit of a feather in their cap in order to try and survive this season and get ready for the next season. And then finally, what is going to be the happening between these two teammates battling it out for the championship, Padovani and Overbay? This is the story of tonight's race, pretty much this, actually the story all season long. Who will come out on top here tonight, Joe? Well, we'll get to where things are in the qualifying in a second. Before we do that, we want to mention if you do independent vehicle inspection, there is a lot to keep track of. Whether it's an old school pile of paper documents or a computer full of spreadsheets, it can get overwhelming. But we have great news for you. Inspect a Ride is the fastest way to conduct your vehicle inspections and create reports. You can save time, eliminate paper, keep better inspection records, and simplify your life, all from your iPhone, iPad, or Android phone or tablet. You can find out more about this useful app at inspectoride.com slash iRacing. Or you can even download a free trial to find out if Inspectoride is right for you. So check it out. Once again, that address is inspectoride.com slash iRacing. Also, a big thank you to the IESN, the iRacing Esports Network, for bringing us on in this first season for the Thursday series. Uh, it has been a great one to watch, and we encourage you to subscribe to IESN by clicking on the big red button that says that very thing. Very simple to do to get all the races on IESN in your YouTube feed. So things have gotten very fascinating in qualifying because Padovani, you may have noticed at the top of your screen, went purple. He took the fastest lap away from a very hot Michael Overbay. Two tenths, in fact, because Taylor and the and the warm up, it certainly did not look like that. Overbay looked unbeatable. Looking at the time, it was it seemed and actually impressive that Padovani was able to set the pole time right now. Michael Overbay might though still have a little bit of time though. He's about kind of under five minutes in order to set that qualifying time to beat him. But he's going to have to have a little bit of help and try to run the cleanest lap possible here in order to do it. Got a fair bit of time to try and get a few more laps in. Padovani did duck into the pits uh, after a couple laps out there. He hasn't actually got many on the board. Most of them had off tracks that discounted them. Uh, Overbay, on the other hand, has logged in five timed laps uh, with a 17-8 being his fastest. We're watching the Buckeye right now wind his way through Hawthorne into the back half of the circuit. And now, I don't know about you, Taylor, but for me, this was always my most feared part, just, just through this whole back wooded section. It is because it's so. There's some areas like right now where Overbase is going through Shreve. It is a blind corner. You do not know what's going to be happening right in front of you when you get to that section of the track. That's where you're going to have to definitely have your eyes open and focus, especially if there's a problem up in front of you. Listening to your spotter as best you can will be a big help tonight when going through that section of the track. As he crosses the line. Is this one going to be any faster? No, it is not. A 118 flat. He's got to go around again. Eric Luke behind him, though. No, we're going to Owen McLaughlin. He's sitting in six. Getting ready to finish his lap. Uh, Luke, who I mentioned before, is currently sitting in third behind the two of them. Uh, another five tenths back in there. Half second back. Owen McLaughlin's last lap, unfortunately, did not count. Christian Gritzko is now getting ready to complete his lap. He's actually on the first half of the track coming up towards Surtees. This is the driver, Joe, I believe, who had the you know bad luck award pretty much all season. Have had those good starts, but just can't seem to quite close the deal. Maybe tonight will be the night where he can close it. Yep, certainly uh, did not have the best of races last time in Bathurst. Got turned around in the cutting and then got ran into by another driver as he was trying to get it turned around in that very tight part. See him coming through Westfield now, plunging through Dingledell. How fast can he take Sheen? This tricky blind corner looks nice and solid. Very clean line, but was he too cautious maybe? Most likely, he might have just wanted to take an easy feel at the track out a little bit. He might though need to step it up just a little bit, otherwise he could lose that position. I mean, anything can happen in these final closing minutes for him right now, but Christian Bristow looks like he's going to come across the line. Is he going to improve? Yes. I don't think he, he does. 119.5. That puts him in six. Overbay just recently crossed, and he had another lap that was not scored. He was followed by Padovani. They're right next to each other. 
uh, and Padovani did not improve his time. So they sit as they are with Padovani at a 17-6 and Overbay at a 17-8. Once again on board with the driver leading the points championship. This is actually quite a smart idea that Padovani is doing just in case Overbay is setting the fastest lap this time by. This gives the opportunity for Padovani to quickly respond just in case to swipe the pull away from him. Riding on the nose of Overbay. I'm checking to see if there's any other major players getting ready to finish a lap. We're coming towards the end of qualifying. Anybody who crosses now basically gets one more, and that is it. So as Overbay climbs up, uh, Brabham straight and across the line. 17-9 is close, but not good enough. Padovani's going to follow him. Padovani is the one that does not count this time. Fortunate for Padovani, he could not respond right now, but this gives the opportunity for Michael Overbay to maybe try something here on this final few seconds left on the clock. This is, gives him enough time to run one lap. And uh, he's definitely... Go ahead. Uh, sorry, uh, on screen we're seeing Grits go because he just uh, improved his lap time again. He was bumped down to seventh temporarily and jumped back up to sixth, disposing of Matthew Gunderson, uh, the Canadian fighting pace very late in this session. 13 seconds left. Who's going to cross the line and uh, complete their qualifying first? It looks like Daniel Barnett, actually, who sits in 15th, is going to see the checkered flag, which comes now as he crosses. Does he improve? Nope, he doesn't even get a timed lap that time. That's going to be it for him. Next is going to be Padovani, our current pole sitter, and Overbay has exited out of qualifying, so he will not be able to overtake his teammate. The driver chasing in the championship goes off at the final corner. This lap is not gonna count for Padovani now. Wow. is gonna try to see if he can gain one more position. Looking at the Ooh. times, he does, two. which moves up to fourth. Nice job at 18-7, continuing to improve lap after lap. Duchesne going to be the last driver to complete his qualifying. He sits in 11th. We keep putting so much emphasis on these drivers uh, fighting for the championship. We can't forget that there's a lot at stake down the line as well. Up the Brabham straight, the yellow car goes. The Canadian crosses the line and he does not improve, so he stays in 11th. All right, that settles our grid here for today for the final round. So your starting order starts with the Brazilian, who is only four points back in second place in the points, Jefferson Padovani. He's won three out of the last four rounds. Michael Overbay has not looked as strong. He wrecked out of second place and allowed the championship to be this tight coming into the last race. Can he do better today? He's gonna to start from second on the front row. Next, his teammate, Eric Luke, will be P3 when the green drops. And row two is completed by Gritzko, who in his last lap finds himself up to fourth. Owen McLaughlin will be P5 with Kenny Duval, yet again showing a little bit of speed, but yet again at last week at Bathurst, he wrecked out early uh, from a good position. He'll start six. Matthew Gunderson will be P7, and then eighth will be Mark File. Paul Wiltrich will be ninth, and then Christopher Richards rounds out our top 10. Starting in the 11th position will be Danny Duchesne. Alongside him will be Tyler Gore in the 77. Andrew Spicer will start in the 13th position alongside Eric Harmon in 14th. Daniel Barnett will start in the 15th position alongside Karsten Quint with David Hebert in 17th. Gary Schillings in 18th, Bill Guillaume in 19th, and Ronald McNan McManus did not set a time. He will start in the 20th position. With it being the final race, as always, we sometimes see a little bit less attendance, uh, which won't necessarily be a bad thing for some of these faster drivers. We mentioned the short lap. Well, we could see traffic come into play. It's diff difficult to pass cars that you're competing with on the same lap. Getting past cars on uh, a lap down is uh, as well 
just as tough sometimes if they don't cooperate. We'll see who uh, looks at the blue flags and duly gives way to our leaders when they come upon them late in the race. You can see them all gridded up now, waiting just for the likes of Duchesne, Spicer, and McManus to make their way to the grid. It's going to be a little bit of uh, a short run to pat a kill bend, and then will we see any sort of chaos? Sometimes that corner, with as blind as it is, as tricky as it is, with the cars all bunched up, offers a bit of chaos into there. It is currently uh, about 76 degrees on the track surface, so it's rather grippy, thankfully. That should hopefully help around these incredibly fast corners uh, that uh, plague this track. Andrew Spicer now finds his way to the grid, just waiting on McManus, who wondering if he's even going to show up. Looks like he's not, because the lights are up. Green flag is out, and Jefferson Padovani, a little bit of wheel spin off the line, but he makes good with it. He gets ahead of his teammate, and then snaps ahead of him. Top four, a single fall, but then it starts to get side by side through the rest of the field. A little bit of a bobble, though, from the likes of Eric Luke. He manages to fend off Gritzko into Druids. Cars are still sorting themselves out, but it's a clean one, Taylor. Very clean start here, surprisingly, but we still got that battle for the fifth position. It looks like McLaughlin goes off course right there as they come out. I wonder what happened there. He either got loose, but it might have been a little contact maybe with Duvall as he makes oh. more contact into Surtees. Yep, he is off the course. We'll come back to that replay in a bit. Overbay losing touch with Pat Avani, but it's Eric Luke and Christian Gritzko fighting for the podium spot. Gritzko backs out of it once they hit the backside of the course through Westfield. It is all single file now. Nice contract other than for the unfortunate incident for McLaughlin. It's still single file for most of the pack, but really the big battle Brat probably has to be for 12 between Gore and Spicer. As you can see right now, he's going to be a little bit up ahead, not too far. But still, Spicer trying to hit. I have to say, he did quite well this season with some very good, strong finishes. Watching Eric Luke on screen, completing the first lap. He fends off Gritzko successfully, despite a few threats. The hit Paddock Hill bend. Gritzko's going to have, uh, have to be much closer if he wants to try and make an attack. No such bobble from Eric Luke this time through Paddock Hill bend's compression. Back to eighth. This... Uh, uh, is the likes of Mark File, but behind him, Paul Wildridge in ninth was under immense pressure from Christopher Richards. Richards, though, drops off, and is that Duchesne? Who is that? Yes, it is. Duchesne off the course and into the wall out of Graham Hill Bend. Just got up a little bit too high up out of that corner exit, caught it in the grass, lost control of it, and he's still spinning in Surtees right now. So you can look at him. We're going to look at the replay, and then uh, after we watch that, at the same time, Gritzko had a problem, and I think he hit the wall in Surtees. That's, uh, this is Duchesne that we're watching first, and then the, both accidents happened about the same time, so we might have to jump back slightly. Oh, yeah, way too much grass. Look at the car bounce, finds the Armco, goes fully around, and then you can see the damage see how grits go now i haven't seen what happened to grits go here i just suddenly looked forward and saw that he was facing the wrong way uh taylor yeah, looking at right now i think he just might have over it in this corner in certes it's a very difficult you can easily lose control of the car and you see right there he was i think he caught a little grass on the inside that could have been a big help for him as well as well where it could have caused the car to spin around as well we're going to come back live where Gritzko is still running, and amazingly so is Duchesne. Uh, but I think Duchesne is trying to find his way into the pits. Gritzko came out a lot better out of that. In fact, I don't really see much damage on the car. Meanwhile, that means that uh, Gunderson has been promoted to fourth. But how long is he going to hold on to that? Kenny Duvall, who has been mistake prone much of this season, is getting right up underneath him had a good run coming out of Westfield. So he's gonna try to apply the pressure right now to make a pass. Looks like he's gonna back off just a little bit as they head into Sterling's. So 
He is definitely a man on a mission. He wants to find that redemption that he's been needing all season long. Try to end the season on the highest note possible. Let's stay with this because I have, uh, as Bill would say, my spidey senses tingling. We've seen, seen Duvall poking and prodding a little bit. He clearly has better pace over Gunderson at this point. So, oh, and look at him come from way back, poking his nose in, but I don't think that was going to work. He was a mile away. Stays right with him down through Graham Hill Bend. And still, he's not able to shake Matthew Gunderson into a mistake. I, I made a note for myself. From my experience, Taylor, I, I'm thinking that's what it's going to take for some of these overtakes. It's just, just an error from the driver ahead. It is, and this track is very prone. I mean, we just saw here momentarily where one of our top five runners just made a mistake going out of Surtees. So this is definitely a track where you can make some mistakes. We have the issue with Carson Quint right now. He's definitely got some issues right now. Now, he was sitting in 12th when this happened. He was coming into Surtees. Well, this is very similar to Gritsko. You watch uh, here, he's coming down towards Graham Hill Bend now. And it's the next corner. Watch the left two wheels as he's just about mid corner here, Taylor. Yes, indeed. Yes, the grass definitely claims another victim here at Brands Hatch. Just clips that grass over the barrier into the Armco. And that, my friends, is uh, quite a bit of damage to that radical. Not, uh, looks like it's going to be able to continue with how much damage it shows. It, it always continues to amaze me how twitchy these cars are. It just looked almost instant that as soon as he touched the grass, he was off and away. Andrew Spicer, in the meantime, uh, was recently in a nice battle with the car behind him, the orange and black machine of Tyler Gore. Spicer managed to claim ninth due to that. He's not done yet. Not too far off the road from him is Christopher Richards running in eighth. So he is on the move. Andrew Spicer is. And he's definitely one to keep an eye on tonight. He's just slowly but surely working his way up through the field. So as we watch Spicer work his way around, we go over to uh, Gunderson once again. Duvall's not been able to get by. He's hanging right with him. He's starting to look like he's giving him a little bit of space. He was riding much closer when we first joined this. Yeah, showing a little bit of patience right now. Knows it's still early, but knows that if he does not find an opportunity to make the pass, he knows that, oh, that's a, a nice run as they come down out of the paddock hill bend. I mean, he is definitely using a lot of brake through that section of the track. Ooh, he gains a lot coming out of Druids. Oh, and he gets into the back of him. Turns both of them around instantly, 180 degrees. And as they try to refine the circuit, they're losing spots. File gets by them. Wildridge, Richard, Spicer, Gore. They're still trying to get their way back. Duvall had to take a tow. Wow. Gunderson eventually returns in 11th as we go to the replay. I, ad I admire Kenny Duvall's speed. I just, I want to see him finish a race. And the sad thing is, it's like he has the speed where he could probably have even had an opportunity to even challenge the likes of Padovani and Overbay for the championship, but just these small mistakes have cost him all season long. I wonder how much damage Gunderson has because right now that's McLaughlin and Gritsko in a battle. Now Gritsko might actually be faster than Gunderson because he was sent backwards by his own mistake and he's been trying to climb his way forward since. Oh, and uh, actually he's McLaughlin's being given the spot as, as Gunderson literally pulls over for him. I think there might be a little bit more problems to Gunderson's car than he might have realized going down the straight. We saw that onboard camera. You saw that wing mount bent a little bit. Maybe not maybe affect it too much, but still mm. there could be something in the engine that could cause an issue as he goes off course now again. 
Yeah, a little wide out of Druids, and that will hand it over to Gritsko. Gunderson now down to 12th. Gritsko up to 11th. McLaughlin to 10th. Now, if you're wondering what's going on with our leaders and our uh, championship battle, Padovani is leading by about one and a half seconds. It's not a, a huge gap between the two of them. However, I'm trying to do a little bit of research, figure out how many points are awarded. I think it might actually be four points from uh, from first to second. And if that leaves them at a tie, here's the weird thing. Well, actually, no, it won't leave them at a tie because Padavati gets a bonus point uh, for pull. Uh, but if they do tie, uh, Taylor, uh, Padavani already has more wins. It's three to two right now. So if Padavani wins and they get a tie, then Padavani takes the championship. This is crucial for him right now. So if he tries to stay up into the lead right now, just pretty much this is the opportunity that Padovani needs. So Overbay would need to try to go for the win if they have to tie. So this is going to be quite the race here between these two teammates. And uh, I like to see that Overbay is keeping him honest. We ride on board with Michael now. The question is, is this going to be enough to keep him, to, to give him the championship? They've also stretched away from the likes of Eric Luke, another driver who handed away a potential victory last race at Bathurst, wrecked out of the lead early on. And the incredible thing, uh, as I went back and reviewed all that happened last race, Padovani went from 11th to 1st in under 15 minutes. That, that just tells you how great of a driver Padovani is. Even when his qualifying isn't uh, incredible, he makes up for it with his race pace. Padovani, meanwhile, sets the fastest lap of the race as we go back to 10th. And Owen McLaughlin and Gritsko continue that fight. McLaughlin doing a great job of just trying to get up, stay ahead of Gritsko. Gritsko trying to find a little bit of recovery after his mistake a few moments earlier on into the race. Gritsko really closing in as they go down the Bratham Strait. I mean, he is just really trying to put the pressure on right now, but cannot seem to quite, quite close the deal as they now head into Druids. Riding on board with McLaughlin there for a moment, uh, looking back from the gearbox. We're starting to enter the, uh, the pit window, and though this pit lane entry isn't I would consider too difficult, especially in this car. That pit exit, I, it always makes me a little bit nervous, especially when I, I'm in the car and coming out of the pit exit, Taylor. It is good, especially with the pit exit. You're basically going down the hill again, pretty much like you're actually on the track again. But it's going to be so difficult, especially with oncoming traffic, where you have to listen to your spotter, let you know if you're clear on the outside, where you can get back into the racing line to set up for that next corner, because it is a little bit difficult to hug that corner when you're starting from that inside line coming off pit exit. All right, this battle certainly seems to uh, not want to peel apart from uh, either car as Gritsko spins coming out of clearways, and he does get it going before Gunderson manages to reach him. In fact, Gunderson heads into the pits. But Gritsko clearly losing an opportunity with more time lost. This is something Gritsko did not need. Just snapped it loose around coming out of Clark. Unfortunate for Gritsko, the Canadian driver been having a <laughs> up and down season for sure and just cannot seem to close the deal. He's got a little bit of time to make up on Owen McLaughlin, but still has Plenty of gap for Daniel Barnett to not lose a position. So it's going to be tricky with these bonus points as we take a look at fifth. Again, I'm trying to make sure that uh, we keep everybody up to date with what's going on in the points championship. It's three points that separate first to second, but that's before bonus points. That uh, is where we've got to uh, do a little bit of math after the race is over real quickly and try to give it to you as an off for Wildridge means Christopher Richards has the momentum. He goes around the outside. Defensive move from Wildridge keeps Spicer behind, but Spicer loses the car and goes completely around. Unfortunate for Spicer right there. Able to get the car back and running up again, but it looked like Wildridge tried to go on pit road and Spicer didn't know where to go. 
take a look at the replay. This is Andrew Spicer, the number 22. Can't quite tell if he's trying to go in. No, I don't think he is. I think he just, you can see the rear just starting to come around even before they, hit, they come towards the pit entry. So those bonus points that we mentioned, uh, it's one point for pole. I think I, I said something about that a little bit ago. And then they've got a bonus point uh, for fast to slap. Oh no, Padovani. What happened to Padovani here out of Sheen? Let's take a look at the replay. Oh my goodness. He was sitting so pretty. This is... Uh, is this, uh, no, this is into Westfield here. Through Dingledell, up into Sheen here. This is driver error. There's nobody around. Goes up into the grass, and there it goes around. Ooh. Jefferson Padovani just clips the grass and sends that car right into the Armco barrier. Unfortunate for the leader of the race. And wow. I so think he's, it's come safe to, to he's come to the pits. Uh, immediately and it looks like he's taken repairs because he's been in there a fair bit they should be in for about 12 seconds he's up to 20 right now Overbay is still out there boy I, 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 I feel like Michael has been saved by the bell a little bit here but it's not over because that same mistake could happen to Michael himself and that is why we run the race, because Michael Overbay could have the same thing happen in the same exact spot, even. I mean, we've seen several well-talented drivers in this car and in this track make mistakes, even the likes of Michael Overbay, like we saw last week at Bathurst. So anything can happen here tonight with Michael Overbay and Jefferson Padovani, as we just saw. And Padovani's not in his car right now this is not a good sign he's been in for over a minute he's gonna lap down from over bay even oh boy let's go to eighth place andrew spicer currently trying to hold off gritsko gritsko's come back out on track he was fighting mclaughlin earlier but now that he's taken his pit stop and uh, excuse me no he hasn't taken his pit stop yet it was just that spin handed over the spot to spicer 22 who himself made a mistake coming out of the final corner now has a slow run out of paddock hill bend slight defensive move up into druids and gritsko doesn't make an attempt gritsko though is all over the back bumper of andrew spicer oh as we see big spins around both of them do and did gritsko actually get into him or did he manage to avoid him i think he never touched him there was no but contact Wow, what heads up from Gritsko, but I think that's a uh, very little compensation, uh, consolation rather, uh, to him. Well, if you look at it on the bright side with Gritsko as we still watch the replay, he's still got a seven second lead over 10th place and there's no damage on the car from that contact. So, couldn't be too bad. Cat-like reactions. I can't believe he did not hit that car. You can see how close he was. Gritsko just saw him touch the grass and start to spin. Locked the rears up. Spun a little bit himself, and he's back going. He's in ninth. Spicer still ahead of him, but like you said, he's got a good back gap back to Barnett. Uh, so not too many worries in his head, other than trying to make up for the lost time. Still 27 minutes left. Our highest pitter is Wildridge. Padovani has been in the pits uh, for multiple laps now. He's two laps down. It's three minutes I'm not sure that Jefferson's going to be able to get back out there, much less actually take the championship at this point. Unfortunately, I was actually kind of looking forward to a good championship fight here today, but unfortunate for Padovani, I think it's safe to say Michael Overbay will be our champion when the race is over. Riding on board with Paul Wildrich. Sits in 12. He's already got his pit stop done. He's one of the few drivers uh, to get a win well, I shouldn't say few because we had quite a few at the uh, start of the season. Uh, but the the Hoosier was uh, one of the drivers that managed to find himself on the top step of the podium. Uh, Paul considered that a little bit of a fluke, uh, but he's had a, a couple decent races this season, we should say. He's not without speed, just he's up against some steep uh, competition. 
and that was what was amazing to watch him race this at Road Atlanta. Another couple of drivers, Owen McLaughlin, who was really good early on in the season. I mean, had excellent speed at Spa, at season opener now. And Tyler Gore, who's now coming down pit road, he showed some speed early in the season, but has fell into a little bit of a rut towards the second half of the season. So maybe tonight can put a little bit of a good high note for him tonight. Getting some information from uh, either one of Padovani's crews or friend. friends. Friends, uh, he's got 10 minutes of repair, so he is going to be in there for a long, long time. Not sure when we'll see him back out on track. Gore, though, the Canadian, is uh, back out and going. Really Turns in ninth. That will put him as our highest pitter for the time being. I believe Andrew Spicer. Nope, that's Andrew Spicer came down pit road as well. Time. Oh yeah, 26 seconds for Spicer. Did, did he have damage as well, potentially? I think he had a little bit of damage early on from the race, but he's going to try to get back on it. He actually cuts a little bit into the grass right there coming off pit road. Wonder I think he might have some wonder if the, Yeah, hopefully that's not an unsafe pit enter pit exit i wouldn't think so though because i think it's only if you cross the white line still a little dangerous of course a little bit i mean we've seen even in practice early on some drivers make mistakes coming off pit exit where they hit even the armco barrier before they come out of pit road so even the pit road can be a little bit tight and difficult for some drivers Riding on board uh, Christopher Richards right now. He sits in fourth, having started, and get this, 10th place. A lot of spots gained. Mark File as well, jumping from eighth to third, but that's becoming a bit familiar for File. Uh, he started uh, a, a little bit farther uh, down. I think he was in sixth at the start at Bathurst and uh, came home in his second place just by avoiding a lot of the problems that many of those around him fell victim to. This is starting to look uh, quite a bit like that, even though it's a very different track. Two totally opposite tracks, but yet we see Christopher Richards doing a stellar job here today. I mean, actually still tracking down the likes of Mark Files. We could see him up towards the podium position before this is all said and done, as he is closing into the back bumper. And they're coming up out of Clark down the Bratham Strait. I mean, Christopher Richards, just a stellar job, even looking at his stats and everything he's shown he's been working slowly but surely up his way through the field here throughout the season we've got some of our cars who have pitted finding themselves having to deal with cars who have not pitted or slower on pace paul wildridge just overtook gary Schilling, and he was being chased by gunderson but managing to get by Schilling right before the back half of the course has been, uh, proved to be problematic for gunderson who's now stuck behind uh the uh, green and white car. This is Wildridge that we see on screen now. Don't really need the replay. It was a pretty simple pass. But look at how look at how bottled up Gunderson is. Yeah, Gunderson is needed to find a way quickly to get by Shillings in order to try to close that gap on Wildridge. This could be a good time to make the pass down the Bradham Strait. He's going to take a look right now as they head to the Paddock Hill Bend. Beautiful pass to the inside, completes it and now sets his sight on his rival, Paul Wildridge. Ooh, but the damage is done. What was about two tenths of a second up to the number 67 car, Gunderson now has to uh, bring down a two second gap to something a little bit less. Did we have a change for position up at the top? Christopher Richards? What happened? Yes, indeed. Richards had an off and he lost out to Harmon. Take a look at the replay. This was in Sterling. Here we're going to see right uh, coming into the bank left-hander, the New York driver, too hot in. Oh, no, uh, excuse me. No, that was the car overtaking him. This is Richards that we're going to watch now from on board. This should give us a real good idea of what caused this. Wow. Out of lock, late breaking into the corner entry just caused the car to get loose coming out from underneath them. As he decided to come down pit road and now completed his pit stop. 
So now he has to now go back find Tyler Gore, which is actually right in front of him as Tyler Gore is our current highest pitter. Mm, it's been a bad day for Christian Gritzko. He had yet another spin, another one in Surtees, but this time he did not hit the wall. He simply backed it up into a cone and then took off once more. He's currently sitting in six. I think that's spin number three or four. I think four, actually. I lost count, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. That's not a good thing uh, if we start to uh, have trouble figuring out how many times you've been turned around. 20 minutes left to go on the clock. We're still waiting on Jefferson Padovani uh, to come back out if he comes back out. And even then, I'd say the nails are in the coffin on his championship hopes because Overbay will be well ahead even if Overbay has any sort of trouble. He has yet to pit our race leader and points leader. He started to see the championship potentially slip away. But this final round, Lady Lux smiled upon the Buckeye driver in the number 68. Uh, leading might even take a win as he clinches the crown. What a drive indeed for Michael Overbay and that beautiful radical coming down out of Clark down the Bratham Strait. Has a little bit of lap traffic in front of him, but I'm pretty sure he will be patient and make quick work of the likes of Gary Schillings down towards the paddock hill. Then, oh, as we have trouble. Wow, right off there. track for Overbay. Yeah. The compression at the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend proves that it's tricky even for the fast drivers. And that could have been much worse. If he caught more of that gravel, it could have easily sent him careening into the Armco barrier. So a little bit of a fortunate uh, event for him right there as he was able to get control quickly of the car. Now, the good news for him is that uh, even if something does happen to him, at 29 points back, uh, Mark File with the 13 pocket points for Michael Overbay, uh, Mark File cannot overtake him, I am pretty certain. Uh, Mark File currently sits in third. If he gets promoted up to second by a problem for Overbay, that definitely won't be enough for him to overtake him in the championship. So at this point, uh, we can pretty confidently say that no matter what, Overbay should have the championship. It's not for certain, but unofficially, that's what the math is pointing towards. Tell you what though, that team's championship could tighten up just a little bit right now with Padovani the likes in the pit roads as he's now actually, I believe, nope, he's still on pit road right now. Or is he back on track? I'm looking at relatives. Yes, he is back on yep. track. He's out there. He's running in 16th, and he's eight laps down. The next car uh, closest to him is David A. Bear, about 42 seconds ahead, which is more than half a lap. Uh, now, knowing Padovani's pace, if his car got pretty well fixed, he could still uh, chase down A. Bear. But, I mean, that's little consolation. That's the only position he would be able to gain on track unless more drivers had incidents. Yeah, as we always back to the point though, that team's championship could tighten up just a little bit with Eric Luke and Mark File running second and third with only Overbay leading and Padovani back in 16th. So I don't think that Eric Luke and Mark File could maybe clinch the team's championship, but they can definitely close that gap just a little bit here when this race is over. File uh, has about 10 seconds up to the second place driver, Eric Luke. I think perhaps one of the most disappointed drivers, even if they do get the team's championship, which is obviously valuable uh, to these guys. Uh, Luke will come away, uh, unless something happens to Overbay, Luke will come away without a win this season. And that, I think, is a shame because Luke has proven himself to be very, very fast. Tyler Gore just had a problem coming out of Graham Hill Bend. It was a single car spin out of the downhill left-hander. Let's take a look at the replay. Yep, that's a pretty simple case of the rear swapping ends with the front as you start to find the power. More cars in the pits, Owen McLaughlin. Uh, comes in from fifth, Eric Harmon as well. 
Waiting on a number of drivers at the front of the field to pit still over Bay, Luke, File, and Gritsko. Uh, Gary Schilling as well has not come in, but he's down in 11th. Lachlan, the Californian, returns to the circuit. 15 minutes to go. We're seeing a relatively spread out field. Only 16 cars still running on the track. We have retirements in the form of McManus, Duchesne, Quint, and possibly Duval. Duval has been in repairs for 12 whole minutes. So I'm not sure that we should expect him back. He could still yet return. Looks like we have our third place driver on pit lane right now, Mark File. He is the first one out of our top five to wave the flag. Actually, Aaron Hartman was actually looking at oh. right now. Ooh. Sorry, grits go around again. This one in Sterling. Didn't hit anything. Boy, he's gotten very, very lucky a number of times. File returns to the track. And in fact, File returns in third, which was where he was when he pitted the triple seven. Clearly not losing out anything. In fact, it's a long, uh, it's a long ways back to the next driver who has pitted, Eric Harmon. Uh, it is roughly seven seconds, eight seconds between File and Harmon. Staying out this time. So is Luke. And uh, it's a long ways back to Gritsko next. In fact, well, uh, this is actually, I shouldn't say who's on the lead lap right now because it's a little bit wonky due to the pit stops. Get a better picture of that once we get the last of our leaders in. What a fascinating unfolding of events in terms of the championship. Pat Avani making us bite our nails, making Overbay bite his nails all the way down to the line. But his own mistake scuppered his chances and practically hands it over on a silver platter to Overbay. And you see the Brazilian who at least uh, will tie on wins if things stay as they are. Both teammates taking three this season. In an eight-round season, I'd say a geodesic should be pretty proud of that. I mean, that is impressive running for a team here this season. Six out of the eight wins go to this team. And, I mean, just a stellar performance as we now have Michael Overbay coming down pit road. He is going to complete his stop with under 13 minutes left on the clock. Eric Luke, though, decides to stay out. And then Christian Rich goes a good ways off. I don't think he'll be able to catch him. But let's see what he's able to do with Eric Luke coming. See if he decides to come down and respond the next time by. Yeah, Luke weighs back, so I don't know that he can necessarily leapfrog him. Especially with uh, so little racing left to go. Overbay returns in second place. This is Luke that we are watching. The number 09 through Pilgrim's drop towards Hawthorne. Just him, Gritsko, and Schilling yet to take their scheduled stop. I just watched the pass for third between Mark File and Gritsko. Gritsko still has to make his pit stop, but Mark File just let him by down the Browden straight. No problem at all. Didn't want to probably have an issue going down into the first corner. So he decides, knowing that Gritsko has to make a pit stop, decides to just let him by. Yeah, that's some really savvy racing uh, from Mark File if he did let him go. I would hope that he's, he's aware or someone maybe is in his ear letting him know that Gritsko has to pit, so not worth risking the car. Uh, so Mark File will re-inherit that in the triple seven. What happened to Tyler Gore here? This is out of Druids. Oh, this was contact with another car, David A. Bear. I think it was a lapped car. 
A bear is going to get spun around, and actually uh, Matthew Gunderson gets involved in it as well. There's the initial contact. Both cars spin around. There's Gunderson, blind corner, T-bones him, absolutely turns over a bear. Unfortunate, right? That was a hard hit for David A. Bear. Matthew Gunderson as we go on board. I mean, goodness gracious. Look at this. Pick heads or tails. Unfortunately, whatever A. Bear picked was not the right side. And unfortunate, that takes out both teammates for that clap for those two cars of Gunderson and Gore. Both of them going to have a little bit of damage to the car, especially the likes of Gunderson. All right, Gritzko's finally come in, taking his stop, and it's a regular amount of time. So whatever damage he may have gotten from uh, clipping the wall is, who's that going off? That's Spicer, who's laps down, so that's not for position. He manages to get back on course, but uh, Gritzko, who clipped the wall early, uh, seems to not be affected enough by it to really be concerned with it. Eric Luke, uh, our temporary leader, takes his stop. He's going to hand that back over the number 68. Michael Overbay re-inherits the lead. Just a quick stop right now. Eric Luke comes off pit road finally and going to easily restate, get back into second position miles ahead of Mark File who is still hit, sitting in the third position as Overbay pulls out to about a almost a 12 second lead over the likes of Eric Luke. There we see our championship leader, potential champion, we should say, in the inaugural season of the American Night Racing Thursday series. Now, I don't know if anybody uh, mistakenly told Gary Schilling this was Sukuba or something, but he still has not pitted with nine minutes to go. Granted, he's a lap down. There's the green and white car. He just decided to uh, keep on driving. Give him the Dory Award for just keeping on it on the track. No damage to the car by the looks of it looking around the car. So uh, I'd say not a bad run for Gary Schillings, even though he's a lap down in 11. It's not a bad run. Yeah, only 10 cars on the lead lap, and since Schilling won't re inherit the lead lap with this, is uh, who's this he's, that's trying to get by? That's Daniel Barnett, who's actually, oh, no, this is for position. This is, this is a battle for 11th. Daniel Barnett's going to try to utilize a little bit of the slipstream, not much of a straightaway here down the Braddon straight before they go into turn one. But Gary's doing a really good job of keeping the car on track as they head down to Druids. It's a little bit wide, though. This might give the opportunity for Daniel Barnett to take a peek to the inside as now we see Schilling go a little off course, but still able to hold off Daniel Barnett for that 11th position. Now, we don't need to go to a replay as a little bit ducking to the inside. Daniel Barnett starting to get aggressive. I can report that uh, Ritzko had another spin in Surtees. He did not hit anything, but he said enough is enough. I'm having trouble. And he has exited the race down to the inside into Hawthorne, who's brave. Oh, I'd say that Chilling is brave. Chops the nose off of Daniel Barnett. What a power move to try the hold off the likes of Daniel Barnett. This is soon going to be the battle for 10th position right now as Barnett is trying to find any which way to get by. He might take a look as they go down into Shreve. I mean, just an excellent battle between these two. Even though this is for 10th position, still great racing between the likes of Schilling and Barnett. And there's, the, uh, there's Gary Schilling finally coming into pit. I wonder if uh, Barnett knew that he had to fit, because that's going to be a little frustrating if he didn't. He's just battling with nothing. There's Michael Overbay. Still up ahead. Now leading by 11 seconds over Eric Luke. Overbay started this on the front row, but it was in second place. He was outrun by his teammate, uh, at least in one lap pace by about two tenths of a second on a relatively short track. Then behind him, Eric Luke started this in third, has jumped up one position, looking at a nicely earned podium. I think he probably wanted a little bit more 
Uh, still, he's been running a quiet race. He's in no man's land right now with 15 seconds. Back to the last. Uh, oh, and uh, who's this? Spun around. That's McLaughlin. Got it looped around. This looks like to be I'm quite 12 of the corner right there. This is in turn one. I think. I think it's in Druids. Yeah, oh, yep, and right around she goes. Didn't hit anything. Teammate swings on by and gets it going once again after a little lawn mowing. So back to our run through the order. Mark File sitting in third. The triple seven started in eighth place. Yet again, showing himself to be a steady and consistent driver. Just needs to be a little bit faster. Maybe he could get some wins. And uh, same deal with Eric Harmon, who was on the podium last week. Not sure if that's going to be the same this week unless another driver falls by the wayside. But still, he sits in fourth, having qualified. And he actually did take a qualifying time this uh, this race compared to last round uh, from 14th to fourth for him. Top five rounded out by Christopher Richards. He started in 10th himself, another driver who just avoided the mess, avoided the mistakes, and now is looking at fifth place if he can hold on to the car for the final five minutes. What about the next five, Taylor? Currently sitting in sixth position is the likes of Paul Wildridge, having a quiet night here right now as he's trying to chase down the likes of Christopher Richards some six seconds back from him as it goes up the search. He's doing a great job tonight. No issues started in ninth with him in their positions. Behind him is the likes of Owen McLaughlin, who just had his spin in Druids. Started back in fifth. Lost a little bit of time here today for the California driver. Looking, probably looking forward to have an ending of the race here tonight. With Matthew Gunderson, though, five seconds behind him, closing up on him. Started back in seventh. So he's lost a little bit of time here tonight, but still a great run for the Canadian driver as he's trying to find his way after that incident earlier. Behind him is his teammate, Tyler Gore, the second of the Canadian drivers of this team. Has had a rough night as well after that contact early on as we see the lights. I believe that looked like our leader Overbay going by. And then rounding out our top 10 is still going on. I believe that battle for Barnett and Schilling has ended as Schilling has decided to come down pit road. But Barnett will round out your top 10. The New York driver currently only one lap down as there's now only nine cars in the lead lap. And uh, indeed, Schilling's actually still behind Barnett, but it's about 29 seconds between them. Uh, he's running in P11. He started it in 18th. Uh, I have to tip my hat a little bit to Gary. The strivers who may not have the pace, but just keep at it and find results like this have my admiration. Uh, I consider myself one of them. <laughs> Andrew Spicer's behind him in 12th. I feel like maybe Spicer could have seen a little bit more, but uh, couldn't avoid some of the problems today. He still hasn't uh, really fallen too far back because he started in 13th, so he's actually gained one position. Uh, then we've got the likes of Phil Gilman out there in unlucky number 13. Uh, he's actually three laps down instead of one lap down. Gilman, we haven't really paid attention to him, so I'm not exactly sure what has affected his race, but judging by the damage, I mean, uh, put two and two together. Then uh, Gritsko is still actually 14th, but he is not in the race right now. I believe he should be overtaken by Jefferson Padovani pretty soon. Padovani back out on track uh, and running in 15th, should jump up to 14th. Then uh, he is the last car running, David A. Bear. Looks like he's not gonna be able to return to track ever since he got flipped over. Kitty Duvall as well is not coming back. He's been in the pits for a whole 25 minutes. We ride on board with uh, Padovani, continuing to do what he can, trying to finish with his chin up somewhat. Even if he can't take the championship, he wants to see the checkered flag. Still, though, can't get enough of the speed that Padovani has shown this season. We kind of come scratching our head during pre-race when we see him in practice, wondering, okay, are we expecting him to be towards the back? And then come qualifying, we see him jump up to the top of the leaderboard instantaneously just about as oh there's a little bit of a problem right there in front of them is that Owen McLaughlin again it was indeed down into Graham Hill Bend just locked up the rears I think not sure if it's worthy of a replay he gets it going and continues in eighth now 
over Bay should get the white flag this time by, I want to say. He's got back to Eric Loop holding now at about eight seconds. I think he may have slowed down slightly. I'm wonder I'm wondering if Overbay is just backing it off so he can uh, take a, a, a easy victory instead of losing the car. That would be a smart move for him indeed as Overbay just kept thinking about what happened to him last round at Bathurst to where it put him in this predicament. He definitely needed to go through there as he goes by into Sheen. Nice smooth transition, not unlike his teammate Padovani, who had that incident early in the race. So this is the time where Overbay is just trying to bring it home in one piece. White flag comes out for the Buckeye driver. It took us a while this season to really pick out who looks strong for the championship. But about halfway through, when the dust settled, this man looked like he could be a huge factor and indeed he was he jumped to the front in the points and even though his teammate gave him a hard time his teammate started to win a little bit more than he did for a while over bay is now responding a mistake at bathurst looked like it could cost him he threw it away with the white flag almost in sight then came back this round lacked a little bit of speed might have been sweating a little bit, but he didn't let it phase him. As he comes through Hawthorne for the last time, as he comes to complete the last lap of season one here in 2019 for the American iRacing Thursday series, I'd say this is a championship well earned. He might be looking over his shoulder if Padovani manages to show up for every round next season. He could be a huge challenge for the number 68 car. Michael Overbay now heading towards Clark. One corner to go. The number 68 will be your champion this season in the American iRacing Thursday series. That takes us to Eric Luke. The gap has come down significantly, but uh, there's no problems for Overbay because Luke will take second and the last of your podium will be Mark File in the triple seven. What a way to cap the season off here for the PRL as we're waiting for the rest of the field to come through. Eric Harmon looks like he will come home in the fourth position. New York driver does well here. And then also rounding out the top five will be Christopher Richards, the Midwest driver, bringing it home. And things have gone from bad to worse for Matthew Gunderson. He's out of fuel on the final lap. The number 33 is coasting. You can see, just trying to make this track as short as possible. His teammates coming up behind him. I think we're going to see a little bit of sportsmanship. Indeed, he's giving him a nice little shove. Going to make sure he can get all the way to the checkered flag. So as we watch those two work their way around, we're going to go to break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the unofficial results. We'll have driver interviews on screen as well, you'll see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC.
back here at Brands Hatch. We just watched the final round of the American iRacing Thursday series. It has been a fantastic season and a great race to finish it off, especially for this man up at the top, Michael Overbay. Number 68 not only takes the win, but clinches the championship here in the final round. Eric Luke, who never did get a victory this season, takes second yet again. And Mark File completes our podium with a good finish this season for the tri triple seven. Uh, Eric Harmon as well with a well-earned fourth place is followed by Christopher Richards in P5. Paul Wildridge will take six with Owen McLaughlin in seventh. Then it's Tyler Gore finishing eighth, actually just at the line. He pushed his teammate all the way to the end and then decided to take the spot away from him. Uh, I don't think Gunderson could be too mad considering he's glad he saw the checkered flag in ninth and uh, the first car lap down goes to Daniel Barnett in 10th. Gary Schillings will come home in 11th position, followed by Andrew Spicer in 12th, followed by Phil Guillaume in 13th position. Jefferson Padovani, unfortunate for him to not be able to take home the win or the championship. He will come home in 14th, followed by Christian Gritsko, who was pretty much spun in just about every corner here tonight. Followed by David A. Bear, who ended up on his roof late in the going. Kenny Duvall, who had an unfortunate again night, could not come home with a finish. Karsten Quinn in 18th, Danny Duchesne in 19th, and Ronald McManus did not start. With that, we have our uh, winner and unofficial champion with us, Michael. Uh, by our math, which for once we feel pretty confident about, you have clinched the championship with this win, sir. Congratulations. He's speechless today. Let's uh, see if we can get uh, Michael uh, mic'd up here. Might still be celebrating a little bit post-race as we came back after a short break. Michael, do you have a copy? Okay, there we go. Does that there work There we go. Yeah, now we got you. <laughs> yeah. right. I must have ate my lucky charms this morning because that was uh, I got pretty lucky to not get caught up in anything in that track. So uh, congratulations, though, to Glitter Pants. He, did a, he pushed me all year, and uh, he just did a great job. And uh, I want to say congratulations to Eric and Mark on their uh, podium finish as well. Uh, that was just a good race, though, finally. <laughs> It's interesting that you mentioned the luck because I couldn't help but think uh, during the race after Padovani's incident, how the worm turns. Last race, it was you in those very shoes that, that put you in this precarious position to the final round. Uh, that's exactly right. Yeah, so unfortunately it happened. And I really wish it wouldn't have because we would have had a really good battle at the end. I think we were just kind of both just pushing away from the field and then going to race at the end. And I really wish that would have happened because uh, it's really fun racing with uh, Jefferson. So the inaugural season here with the Radicals on the iRacing, uh, American iRacing Thursday series uh, now belongs to you unofficially. Uh, how do you plan to celebrate? Uh, lots of beer. <laughs> Uh, it sounds like a good time to me. Uh, so uh, coming uh, up next season, I believe we just had the schedule released. I need to go and check uh, exactly what we've uh, got coming up first. Uh, do you have any particular track you're looking forward to most? You know, I have. We hadn't decided if we're going to run next season or not. I hope we, we probably will now. We just kind of talked about it last night. I think we're going to Jefferson. And I are going to run again, but uh, not certain yet. So I hadn't even looked at the schedule yet to see what it's like. But really, I like any of the tracks with with this uh, car. I car just a blast to drive. It doesn't matter, you know, where we're at. It's just fun to drive, except for this track because it's hard to pass on. <laughs> I, I don't blame you there. Uh, it's never been one of my favorites. Again, congratulations, and we do hope we see you next season to defend your crown. Thank you. Can I just say thanks to Alpine Stars Geodesic Racing, uh, sponsored by GoPro now. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh, wow. GoPro is now on board with Geodesic. That is some impressive stuff. That was our winner of the race and champion here today at Brands Hatch. Up next... Taylor is going to be talking to second place, Eric Luke. Here with Eric Luke finishing in second position. Eric, it was a quite a quiet night for you here tonight at Brands Hatch, but still a great, great way to end the season off, especially after that last round at Bathos. Tell us a little bit more about how your race went for you. Uh, race went uh, pre pretty uneventful. I was expecting more of a battle uh, this after or this evening tonight. So, uh, uh, to get prepped for it, I grabbed my Lucky Charms this morning and, and was expecting a battle, but it just kind of was a lonesome race. 
it was quite a bit of a quiet race for you tonight. And it seems like Lucky Charm seems to be part of the battle, part of the topic here tonight, as we just were talking with the likes of Overbay about that. So we were looking, talking about the next season coming up. What are your plans and goals for that? Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, it's kind of the same approach that I did to this season. Uh, just hopefully next season I can have uh, many fewer incidents. Um, I had three incidents this season that that uh, pretty much pushed me out of the uh, the top of the standings, and uh, hopefully next season I can I can keep it picked up and maintain the the high intensity pace. All right. Is there any tracks in particular you feel confident that you can maybe uh, take home that first win of the season for you? Looking forward to the new season. Uh, off the my off the top of my head, uh, no. Uh, my opportunity for that was was uh, last week, and and I blew that squarely all the way home. So uh, uh, hopefully just next season I can put it all together. Well, we look forward to seeing you next season here in the Radicals. Is there any sponsors or any fa family or friends you'd like to thank out there tonight? Uh, absolutely. Thank you again to uh, HFD1 Motorsports for sponsoring the season, Fraley's Auto Body for sponsoring Mark File and I, uh, you guys for putting on an awesome show, and uh, big congrats to Overbay on the win, Jefferson for the second place, and uh, my teammate Mark for taking third overall in the championship. I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you, Eric. Again, congratulations on your season. Look forward to seeing you next season. Thank you. Take care, guys. That was Eric Luke, your fin second place finisher here for tonight. And Joe caught up, I believe, with Mark File, Eric's teammate. Indeed. We just heard uh, uh, from Luke that uh, you heard it, and I did the bath myself. File will take third in the championship. Couldn't quite run down Padovani, but that uh, probably makes today's finish feel all the more appropriate, Mark. Yeah, guys, uh, definitely was. <laughs> Uh, I want to congratulate Overbay on a good series. Uh, Glare Pants for bringing in second. And, uh, you know, it was a good series. It, it seemed like a good series. Uh, end of the season, you've been on a bit of a strong tear, I must say. Uh, that's Is that two podiums in a row? I need to check my stats here uh, real quick. But, yeah, I, I think that's two podiums in a row for you right at the end of the season. Does that momentum carry over for you uh, mentally coming to next season, or do you really not take much uh, account into those things? Uh, I mean, the momentum should be there. Uh, unfortunately, I will be moving, so I may miss a few weeks. But I, I think the last couple of weeks here, the, 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 the podium spots for uh, the guys I work with, the A1 grid casting crew, they were my lucky charms in uh, getting that support to get it done. I, I believe we are uh, in the presence of some sort of inside joke that's been happening here today. <laughs> but uh, uh, we uh, coming into this race, uh, when Stefan Schlocker was doing our lap guide, he came to me and said that this, this car was a nightmare on the curbs around here. Would you uh, feel that that was the same, or were you able to dial that out with your setup at all? Oh, absolutely. Curbs are a nightmare. And you can tell if you get on the curbs, you feel it start to bounce. You actually just have to kind of coast it off of there, wait till it settles down before you can apply any throttle or pretty much game over. We saw a number of drivers uh, have problems around this track. So uh, third in the championship, third out there today. Who do you consider your main rival going into next season? Uh, especially as, since, as you say, it sounds like you might miss some points. So I'm guessing it'll down to be down to mostly just who you are up against on the track each day. Yeah. I mean, the, the group I'm usually around are, uh, Eric Harmon, Christopher Richards, Paul Wildridge, uh, Owen, uh, and my teammate, Eric, you know, sometimes I'm able to keep up with him. Uh, on, you know, if the front runners make some mistakes, then I see them guys, but normally I don't get to touch the top three guys that much. Well, you never know what the, the racing gods might hold in store for you. Congratulations. Go pour yourselves some milk and some cereal and enjoy uh, your well-earned results this season. Thanks, guys. And thanks for doing the broadcast. Thanks, PRL. And thanks to our sponsor, HFD1. Thanks. That was Mark File, third place on track here at uh, Brands Hatch. It's going to close us out. We will be back next season. We'll get you an official uh, return soon, of course, here on GSRC. But uh, uh, we have had PRL confirm that they want to come back for the Thursday series. So a big thank you goes out to HFD1 Motorsports, as was mentioned, for bringing this season to the air. As well, a big thank you goes to Inspectoride. Uh, if you want to check out that free download, the free trial, that is at inspectoride.com slash iRacing. Go check it out. 
Also, a thank you goes out to IESN. If you would like to see more of this type of content, all you got to do is hit the subscribe button and you'll get all the official World Championship races and many more on your feed in YouTube. Thanks to the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcast. You can see them listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to Eric Eckholm and June Lalonde who provide our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of their great work. Thanks to the team today, Taylor, Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at globalsimracingchannel.com. You can also check us out on social media. We're on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Gram. Once we get to the official date uh, that we will be back, it'll once again be another Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for the this series. We also have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen. So check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. See you on the track. <laughs>